this first question from the University of Tokyo is, uh, what was it that first got you interested in elementary particle physics and want to research it further? The, the first knowledge I, I had of elementary particle physics uh, came from the, the days when I was in Bristol in the west of England in, in high school. The school, school which, which I attended during the war years, or most of the war years, uh, actually, actually from Easter 1941 and, until the summer of 1946, was called first Cotton Secondary School and Cotton Grammar School. It's now simply Cotton School. Uh, but it's in a previous incarnation, it was the Merchant Venturers Technical College. The Merchant Venturers are the the only merchant company of Bristol, Edinburgh has many merchant companies, but in Bristol, the merchant venturers were the, the organization who organized the fishing fleets in the North Atlantic. And it's believed that they may have come close to discovering America, the American mainland before, not before the Scandinavians perhaps, but before uh, Christopher Colombo. Uh, because um, the fishing fleet from Bristol uh, went way into the North Atlantic, lost the fish because they were off the continental shelf, and then after, after several days' journey, they found fish again, and that was presumably the Grand Banks of Newfoundland, that, but they never looked for land. So this school, was a strange school. It belonged to the Merchant Ventures Company and it was not just a secondary high school, it had a tertiary level uh, which began to prepare students for a career in engineering. Uh, that school was the school at which Paul Dirac was a pupil. At the end of the 1914-1918 war, the University of Bristol, which had been created in the late 19th century, began to build a school of engineering. As the basis for, for this, they took over the tertiary level of this, this technical college and that became the first year of engineering in the university. Uh, Paul Dirac was in that first cohort of students. And uh, at the end of this transition period, the school was transferred to the City Education Authority and renamed the first Cotton Secondary School. Connections that I have with Dirac then were that I w went to that school when my family moved from Birmingham to Bristol uh, because my father worked for the BBC and they thought that Bristol being 120 miles west of London would, be, would not be bombed the way that London was bombed. Uh, and they were wrong. Uh, because we arrived in Bristol, wh where my father had been sent, at Easter uh, 1941, and two days previously, the ancient centre of Bristol had been destroyed. So uh, I found myself, uh, having started secondary education in a school on the western fringe of Birmingham, I found myself transferred to Cotton School in, at Easter 1941. Uh, where the place I lived was uh, some way from the school and I used to walk there in the morning, taking about half an hour, leaving not very much time to arrive in time for morning assembly. So I would stand at the back of the hall in which the pupils were assembled 
uh, we were expected to, to sing some really dreadful hymns. Uh, and the uh, staff of the school would be on the platform at the, at the opposite end. And at the back of the platform, there was a, a board. And the board uh, was a list of the honours achieved by former pupils. And when I arrived and stood at the back, I couldn't ever help noticing that the name Paul Adrien Maurice Dirac occurred several times. So I got to wonder, who was this guy? And um, it took me some time to find out because I didn't have the background to uh, make contact with this sort of thing. But by the time I was, uh, say, 15 or 16, I, I, had, I, had, I had acquired popular science books which told me about the marvels of things like quantum mechanics and modern physics and things called antiparticles, positrons. And so I, I got an idea of what Dirac had, had done. So that triggered my curiosity on the theoretical side. At the beginning of my school days, I thought I would follow in my father's footsteps to become an engineer, but I rapidly discovered that I was so incompetent at anything <coughs> practical, again, in this way following in the footsteps of, of Paul Dirac, who was a, a t total disaster as an engineer, I first of all decided it had, it had better be pure physics, and later on, uh, not practical physics, experimental physics. Uh, I, I couldn't, couldn't, do, couldn't do the experiments it had better be theoretical physics because I had some mathematical skill. And so that was one strand. At the end of my school days, uh, I was in the science sixth form from 1944 to 1946. Well, in, in 1945, that, that war ended and uh, Amongst the events which were organised by the professors of physics in the University of Bristol in that year, there were some lectures to acquaint the public as far as was possible, given the secrecy involved, and educate the public in the background to the nuclear bombs. And, um, the dropping of the nuclear bombs was an experience for me which, which almost put me off continuing as a physicist. But the, uh, I attended the lectures by Neville Mott and Cecil Powell. Cecil Powell, a particle physicist, was so pleased with the attendance at these lectures that he thought perhaps there might be an audience for uh, some lectures on what he was being had been doing uh, as a particle physicist. So he, he, he laid on another course of lectures in the following year, 1946, and I duly uh, attended. They were evening, early evening lectures, so I went after school, and I learned uh, about his experiments sending up balloons carrying hot air balloons carrying stacks of photographic emulsion uh, to study what was coming at us in cosmic rays. And uh, as, as I'm sure members of the audience in Tokyo know, he was successful. And when I was a first year student at King's College London uh, in 1948, I attended another lecture by Cecil Powell on the discovery of the pi plus and the pi minus. Uh, so that was my introduction to particle physics, both theory and experiment. And by that time, I, I was, I'd resolved that I would become a, a, a particle physicist, but a theoretical particle physicist because I was incompetent in, 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 in laboratory work and this eventually I did 
and it involved in a kind of apprenticeship in a different kind of theory at King's College London where they didn't have uh, that kind of, of theoretical physics uh, research and I really started uh, learning systematically about the theory when I moved to Edinburgh in 1954 uh, to work with Nicholas Kemmer who had succeeded Max Born and who had taught when he was in Cambridge most of the uh, cleverest of, of the generation of, 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 of British particle theorists 